Hey everyone, Matt here. I want to examine how you can use the Complete Control Keyboards as a useful live performance tool. I'm going to use Ableton Live in conjunction with the Complete Control S61 to set up incredibly easy instrument switching, layering, parameter tweaking, and playing back of sequences. In this sense, Complete Control Keyboards are one of the best controllers on the market for such a setup. There's no need for stickers all over your MIDI controllers. Just use the light guide and the controller editor to your advantage for this. I'm gonna show you how to set all this up. Check it out. All right, so I'm gonna show you how I set up a simple example like this for a live performance situation. Now, I wanna start off by saying that Complete Control is basically one of the best controller keyboards you can use for this kind of thing because of the visual feedback and because of the ease of use between switching through multiple pages and templates with the control editor. Let it be known that I'm basically just using complete control in MIDI mode right now. Even though I'm going to access some complete control sounds, it's still just running in MIDI mode controlling Ableton Live. So the template looks like this. There's about 10 different plugins inside of this project. I'm not really killing my CPU this way, and everything is basically utilized inside of a DAW-like live for a live situation. So it's actually helpful not to load in all these plugins inside of one program, but rather inside of a DAW where it's meant to be used like that. So you have some drums. These are basically machine running out a simple pattern. And I have my kick isolated in case I want to do some sidechain compression, which I will show later. And I have an arpeggiated bass to start. Notice I've also color coded this stuff. So this is in green and I can see starting here in green. <laughs> I have everything accessed. So I'm running an arpeggiated Monarch instance here with the main parameters already mapped. I just kind of got the main parameters I want to use. Some sends and delays. Sends and reverbs. And then the ever important arpeggiator hold for this instance. So. basically wanted to be able to control it and do other stuff while the arpeggiator is playing the bass line. I can even play the drums now alongside. Turn my drums on and off. And so on. So it'll basically sit there and hold until I would tell it to turn off. Now. When I want to access the next set of instruments, all I have to do is hit preset down and it comes to the next template, which I've labeled versed, for instance. Now, in this next situation, I have a complete control basically empty using the chord sets and directed into the UVIX, UVX 10P, which is an awesome emulation of a, a Roland. Um, Check out my previous video if you need to see how to actually map these things to control a third-party plugin. And since it's down in the octave, but it's still playing higher, I basically wanted to have this section reserved for the strings, but played up two octaves. So I've used Ableton's uh, MIDI pitch effect. But at the same time, I could have also just basically done this inside of the control editor and transposed this section up. Now, all of these different colors are on a different... MIDI channel. And that's why they're not affecting all the other things, even though everything is record enabled. That's the real trick right here, I guess. So I'm able to play these chords. I can, of course, map any device or plugin I want. Maybe I want that sidechain enabled. You get the idea. Moving on next, I have a simple massive sequence here. This is in yellow, so I can see. And all it is is a D note. You play a D note, and then the performer and the stepper is going to basically do the arpeggiated line. Again, just a few macros controlled to change how the sound is used over time. Next. 
up I have a drum rack and a drum rack is great because you can basically each key can be a different one shot so for a live setting sometimes you just have to throw an effect for instance maybe like something like this nice synth fall where I can trigger it and let go and just worry about other stuff or maybe even load a plugin like rise and hit So all my transitions can be taken care of or just throwing off like a vocal sample. Whatever I need to do at any time. At the top here, you'll notice in like this turquoise color is basically a way to trigger Ableton scenes. Now, I realize you can do this with like an APC or uh, an Ovation Launchpad or even a machine, but it's kind of nice to be able to just throw in and trigger all the clips in, and your loops and your sequences inside of your project. So I've set up just a bunch of dummy clips so you can see, but I can be playing each part and... Right, and trigger through the different clips that way. Now, I've also done that in the first template in case I want to be triggering those same clips. And you could, of course, repeat this for each template you use. So you have your main sections of your song you can get to at any point. And then on my third template, I've created just a... A stacked piano strings for the chorus maybe. I've also set it up in control editor to fire at full velocity no matter what so I can have it come in hit real big and nice. Here I have another section for the drum racks and this is actually transposed down so I can trigger different parts. I want to do. And then at the top here, I've got the same setup for that same arpeggiator. So if I wanted to change different parts of it, I can do that here. Now, obviously, it's in a higher up octave, but it's still staying low thanks to that transpose feature inside the control editor. So very simple stuff. Again, you you can I realize you can do this with nearly any MIDI controller these days by turning on different you know MIDI channels and have them affecting different things but I'm telling you there's nothing easier and more visually capable to help you in a live situation than the complete control it's super great for that and look the ease of use I can just jump between all my different templates and have that set up inside control editor super helpful very powerful and I think it's something that a lot of people don't realize and it's something that I think justifies how great this keyboard is so let's take a look at the control editor and I'll show you exactly how I set up some of these templates. So this is the controller editor and this is how I set up these templates to unlock the potential of the complete control keyboard. For a more detailed explanation of this, check out the Native Instruments knowledge base because I'm going to briefly go through how to set this up. So I simply add a new template at which point you have generic MIDI CCs and one simple key zone. To add more, you can just keep adding, and you can see right away they are basically default colored. If you want, you can come in and assign these colors to any color you want. A lot of people wonder how you actually get a black or the lights off. You can actually turn it to black, and you won't see that light guide if you want, if it's too distracting. So in these templates, I just set them up, and you can reorder these after, after the fact. You can just move them around. So it's really nice in a live setup, you can just kind of get them each labeled where you need to go very simply. So something like this, let's look, again, they're color-coded. The different pages are up here if you want to have multiple pages you can scroll through. And then you assign them. You simply assign different colors, different key ranges, whatever. Up here, you can actually come and enter in whatever you want. So if you want to actually call this something, I don't know, maybe you want to use emojis, <laughs> smiley faces, whatever you need to do. You can simply just type it in and uh, assign it a MIDI CC at that point. So the different things are very simple. If you want to actually go ahead and transpose something, simply click on it here. And then as you can see here, I just up and down to set which octaves I want to be controlling. So if you want it to play a lower instrument higher up on the keyboard, that's how you would assign this. So hopefully this was helpful. Try it out. Enjoy.